Hello everybody and welcome to Jeff the Pharmacist. It is super, super duper awesome to have you guys uh, watching today. So uh, today I'm talking about uh, Steglatro. So Steglatro is a new type 2 diabetes drug. It came out um, at the end of last year. Uh, it's made by a company called Merck and it's a Me Too drug. A Me Too drug is a drug that is basically very similar to other drugs that already exist. So usually there's uh, there's one drug that comes out that defines the class. It's a it's a brand new category of drug. It's kind of groundbreaking and then other companies try to compete with it to make make a drug that's like a little bit better than the one that sort of was the innovative drug and that's what Steglatro is. So Steglatro is an SGLT2 inhibitor or sodium glucose like transporter 2 and um, basically what it does is it it uh, causes patients to pee out glucose. So type 2 diabetes is measured uh, primarily um, as far as the primary basic clinical measurements are blood glucose and A1C. So uh, blood glucose is like a sample in, of right now. What is your blood glucose right now? A1C is an average uh, looking back at three months it's a test that you cannot study for. For instance, um, if you ate really well, your blood glucose might be lower. Um, if you were on a cheat day and you kind of went crazy or um, you had really, you know, really unhealthy foods, your blood glucose might be higher than normal. But the A1C takes a picture of your blood glucose over three months and you can actually take the um, A1C and it'll correspond to an average blood glucose. So it's basically an average over those three months. So Steglatro kind of, um, I don't want to say promises, but it basically reduces A1C for most people. Um, and over 26 weeks uh, from the, from the, uh, from the um, studies that Merck did, over, 21, over 26 weeks, uh, the uh, the five milligram dose reduced A1C by 0.7. The 15 milligram dose only reduced it by a little bit more, 0.8. And actually, the placebo group in this study uh, reduced the dose uh, by 0.2, or reduced the A1C by 0.2. So if you look at the difference between the placebo and the uh, Steglatro groups, it's either uh, 0.5 for the 5 milligram group or uh, 0.6 for the 15 milligram group. So um, that's pretty good. It's not incredible. It's um, it's not as good as a lot of drugs out there, but it is. It's pretty good. It's a, it's um, kind of a moderate improvement, and so it could be a um, it could be an important drug in a person with type 2 diabetes uh, regimen. It's it is. Uh, possible. There are some side effects, some issues with the drug that I wanted to touch on. So um, the first one is kind of intuitive and I like to start with things that are kind of intuitive, sort of related to the mechanism of, act of action. There's a lot of side effects that don't aren't really easy to explain with regard to the mechanism of action. But one of the big side effects of this drug are urinary tract infections. Um, specifically uh, fungal infections of the urinary tract. So you can imagine you're peeing out glucose. Uh, glucose is a fuel source for ver for many living things, um, including um, fun fungus and also bacteria. So I'll show you here uh, on this table, and I'll just show you what the uh, what the percentages are with regard to the percentage increase of urinary tract infections. So uh, the first. The, the, uh, the first one I want to point out is female genital mycotic infections. So the placebo group was 3%. Steglatro was three times greater at 9%, uh, 5 milligrams. So Steglatro 5 milligrams was three times greater at 9%. Uh, Steglatro 15 milligrams was 12.2%. Uh, 
for female genital mycotic infections. So those are fungal infections. Sometimes they're called yeast infections. Um, so uh, the Stiglatro 5 milligram dose was three times as high and the Stiglatro 15 milligram dose was four times as high. So that's pretty significant. And if you look at the reduction in A1C, um, is it, if you're somebody who is concerned about um, yeast infections, is it, is it worth the increase in risk for that 15 milligram for that uh, slight increase, slight decrease in A1C? Um, so if you look at male genital mycotic infections, so uh, most, most men don't even really worry about this. Um, so if you look at the placebo group, it's 0.4%, it's very small. Um, it's almost 10 times higher uh, for men uh, because it is not really um, an issue usually. So for Stiglatro 5 milligrams, it's 3.7%. For the 15 milligram uh, group, it was 4.2%. Um, UTI was a, a, a little bit higher. Uh, but not significantly greater. So these would be urinary tract infections. Um, so they separated out mycotic infections and, ur and urinary tract infections. Another thing to note here is uh, itchiness. So vaginal pruritus just means, uh, basically means uh, itchiness. That was 0.4% uh, to 2.8%. Um, so it was a much higher increase uh, on that. Uh, increased urination. This makes sense because um, the, the drug, along with helping people to pee out glucose, also causes uh, a, uh, people to pee a little bit more, and it can reduce the actual blood volume, and that can actually reduce, um, reduce blood pressure, uh, which is another side effect. And people also reported that they were uh, thirstier. You see placebo was 0.6%. Uh, Siglatro 5 milligram was 2.7% and Siglatro 15 milligram was 1.4%. So hypoglycemia was also a concern with this medication, especially when added to uh, other drugs that can cause hypoglycemia. It was less likely to occur um, if it was used for monotherapy. Another issue was uh, hypotension. So um, hypotension just means low blood pressure and along with hypotension, people could experience um, dizziness, especially uh, lightheaded, lightheadedness uh, when standing up quickly. Um, and this is because the drug causes you to pee more and like diuretics, uh, the way that they work is they help you pee more and that helps your blood volume to go down and that can cause a, a drop in blood pressure. In the placebo group, nobody had um, issues with hypotension. 4.4% had issues with it in the five milligrams Stiglatro, and 1.9% of people had issues with um, hypotension. There was also a slight uptick in the number of limb amputations. There was one in the placebo group, there was three in the five milligram group, and eight in the uh, 15 milligram group. It isn't clear if this is because of the medication or if it's a, a random thing, but it is something to think about. So another issue with the medication is kidney related. So um, the medication makes you um, pee out more volume. So there, there's more urination that can cause dehydration and dehydration can lead to kidney damage or um, a kidney dysfunction. So uh, in the placebo group, 0.6% of patients had um, kidney issues. In the five milligram group, 2.5% had kidney issues. And in the 15 milligram group, 1.3% of patients had uh, kidney issues. Some patients had an increase in LDL cholesterol, which of course is not good. Um, it wasn't a massive increase. The average percentage changes in the five milligram group were 2.6%. And in the 15 milligram group, it was 5.4%. And the last issue with Stiglatro that I wanted to mention is called uh, ketoacidosis. It's an extremely rare syndrome, but it can be fatal. And it has been uh, fatal with other medications that are very similar to this. And um, uh, ketoacidosis is a dangerous, um, it's a dangerous buildup of lactic acid in the blood, and it can cause the blood to become uh, acidic. 
and that will that can kill people and that has to be corrected and that uh, there were three cases in the um, Stiglatro trial so it wasn't a lot of people but it is something that um, that is important and it is um, it can be extremely dangerous and very severe but it's also very unlikely with the medication it just it's just something to note so kind of the big takeaway with Stiglatro is that it makes you pee glucose so um, when you're peeing out glucose um, obviously that can that can cause some that can cause um, urinary tract infections or um, fungal infections in the urinary tract um, that's the the biggest concern with it there's also issues with um, they call it hypovolemia that just means you're peeing out more um, water and you pee out more water it'll reduce your blood volume um, because the urine basically comes from your blood and um, that can cause a low low blood pressure um, it can also cause dehydration which can affect your kidneys so i hope you all found this useful um, if you liked the video please give me a thumbs up um, if you're not a subscriber please subscribe it'd be awesome to have you as a subscriber i want to thank you guys for uh, watching thanks a lot